to say people <clears throat> hey everybody hey good morning I mean I'm saying good morning <laughs> it is not morning it is evening and I want to do a quick scope before I go to bed um, something that was burdening me today uh, because I know plenty and many of you are out there making your um, New Year's resolutions and we are not going to do that. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, sister, come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is going to be a good one, y'all. Hey, how you doing, Tasha? This is going to be a good one. Change our perspective. Because I know many of y'all out there probably making your New Year's resolution. I was in the gym the um, other yesterday. And all the New Year's resolution people is all up in there. All up in there. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Triana? So, I'm going to scope about developing per personal vision because I think... That actually um, trumps New Year's resolutions. Um, and I'm going to um, pull out some different points uh, that I've gathered in regards to uh, personal vision. And uh, because I believe it trumps uh, New Year's resolutions because uh, many of us don't even stick to those. Um, and it also makes us, uh, some of us are, you know, with Facebook memories now, if you put all these resolutions that um, in the beginning of last year and then they showing up now, probably now in the first couple of weeks, they showing up in your Facebook memories and your time hop and some of y'all discouraged, some of y'all frustrated. Because Facebook don't showed you what you said that you were going to do that you didn't do. So uh, I want you to share this with your uh, followers, uh, anybody that's having trouble with vision. Um, the scripture that um, that really, really uh, speaks to this, and it's a very popular scripture, is Habakkuk 2. And I'm going to pull out different points to that because um, Habakkuk was a prophet. And um, he began to God began to speak in, in regards to uh, uh, vision and uh, many churches use this scripture uh, when they are trying to communicate their church's vision. Um, but what I want to talk about is having your own personal vision. If you're going to be a Christian in today's uh, society, you need to have your own personal vision. And so um, this uh, that's primarily uh, what I want to talk about. So I'm going to quickly read the scripture real quick. And I'm just going to kind of pull out different points. Um, uh, Habakkuk 2 says, I will stand upon my watch at the first scripture and, and uh, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say to me. And what answer when I am approved? So key point number one is uh, personal vision is prophetic. New Year's resolutions are not prophetic. What that means is it comes directly from God. Uh, your personal vision speaks to you as a person. It speaks to um, um the what you're supposed to do, your significance in the world. You must have to. Add, you have to ask yourself, why are you here? You know. Why are you here? What are you, what is your purpose uh, for? You know, why are, did you just come here to the earth to just, you know, live and die and, and that's it? You have to ask yourself, why am I here? Why? Why am what significance do I hold? Um, what am I to accomplish? You know, if you if you feel like, you know, you are world changers, then what significance do you have to the world? You know, so these are some uh, questions you begin to ask yourself in in. Um, um, because Habakkuk was praying. So uh, uh, vision is birthed out of prayer. Everything that God spoke to me concerning my personal vision and what he wanted to do in my life, it was all out of prayer. I didn't um, come... Um, uh, I didn't have different things that I wanted to do or, you know, we have different people. They say they have uh, different things that they want to do with their lives and it has no point. It has no no aim. It's only just um, 
uh, things that they just want to accomplish with no point or with no significance. So out of prayer, you know, if you haven't been in prayer, you're not going to have no vision. You know, uh, you got vision is God's perspective, you know. And so when you're in prayer and you begin to pray, you begin to pull down uh, God's perspective and what he wants to do in your life. You know, so if you haven't been in prayer already, what you have to do in the beginning of this year is ask God and get his perspective for your year. So uh, vision is God's perspective, you know. Uh, so you have to ask yourself, what is God's perspective for me? You know, what is what did he what does he want to accomplish within me in this year? You're not going to get that out of uh, you're not going to get that just um, rambling through some thoughts that you uh, or looking at uh, different things. You're going to get that out of prayer. And so um one thing um, I want to um, want want to denounce is the fact that vision and dreams are two separate things. You know, now your vision will uh, uh, have some of your dreams in it. It may contain your dreams, but your dreams are not your vision. You know, um, so we have to uh, decipher between. You know, if if your dreams are typically what they are, are birthed out of the idols of the heart. You know, so you must ask yourself, why do you want certain things? You know, if you say, well, hey, I want to have a perfect body. Why? Is it because you want people to see you? Is it uh, because you have low self-esteem? Is it because um, there's a lust spirit? What is it? You know why? You know, you have to ask yourself why, because if you don't, you'll be if it, you you'll you'll miss, you know, um, uh, uh, a miss a, a key deception on what people most most cases what they try to say is in there uh, that's in their um, that's in their uh, in their vision and it's not that at all and so um, you uh, I I believe you know uh, primarily uh, the idols of your heart is is what can really deceive a lot of people. You know, they say, hey, I want to make this amount of money. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to have this job. And you must ask yourself, why do you want those things? And what purpose does it serve? You know, if you were, if God was to give you that, what will it serve? What purpose does it serve? Does it only benefit you or does it benefit others? And what Jesus said, he says, I came to the world that I may serve. You know, I came to the uh, I came and he came as a servant. You know, this is the mind that we have in Christ Jesus. So uh, he came to serve the earth. And so uh, your vision should serve the earth. Your vision to speak to the earth. Your vision, uh, if it's just something that, you know, if, if it only benefits you, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, having a nice body or, or, or having money and all that stuff are not good things. I'm not knocking it at all. What I'm saying is that you have to dig a little deeper and ask yourself, why do you want those things? If you don't want, if you only want money, just so you can, you know, flaunt your possessions and so everybody can know that um, you have a lot of money, which is what one thing that I don't get. I don't understand why people want other people to know that they have money. I, I just don't understand that because what it does is um, it really, really uh, produces a lot of pride in you. You know, you have to ask yourself, why, why do I, why do everybody need to know that I'm balling? Why do everybody need to know that I have money? You know, and so um, a lot of times, People uh, come up with these resolutions and it's based on that. Absolutely, Hush. It's always why people get robbed. You know, if I've come upon a million dollars, ain't nobody going to know. I'll tell you that But you know. Um, but anyway, that's a sidebar. But you have to um, make sure that it's not in your dreams are not clouding what your true vision is. And so. Uh, dreams, like I said, I, I repeat it again. Dreams are not your vision. But your vision will uh, house your dreams, you know, and before you can even begin in vision, you have to allow the Lord to uh, give you a clean heart, a pure heart, because you have to have his desires. And, you know, and some of us still have some of the things that we want on the end that we desire um, still kind of uh, lurking in our hearts. And so we make all of these uh, things that my vision is to be this or my vision is to be that. Then it, it doesn't it doesn't. Uh, produce anything in the earth. It doesn't produce anything in the earth because it's 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 shallow, you know. So I want you guys to think more deeper when you're um, when it comes to uh, speaking to your vision. It has to be a little bit more deeper. So he says, you know, he was on now Habakkuk was in prayer. So you know uh, he he began to um, uh, 
get the vision, and then he says write a vision, write the, write down the vision, and make it plain, and um, so that it can be clearly understood. So your vision should be clear. It should be articulate. You should be able somebody somebody should be able to ask you what is your vision for your life, and you can just speak it, you know. And a lot of times you can tell when people don't really spend time in prayer, don't really spend time, you know, asking these type of questions that they don't really. Uh, they can't articulate their vision. You know, if anybody asks me right now, I can just splat out uh, 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 the overall vision, what God wants to do with this year, you know. And not only just your own personal vision, but I, even speaking to the men, you know, men should have, uh, because we are the um, leaders of the family, we need to have a vision for our family, you know. Me and my wife had a meeting probably about three days ago, and I just lined out what God want to do with our money, what God want to do with our family, what God want to do with this, what God want to do with that, you know. And so um, as men, if we are husbands, we have to be because God gives us the responsibility to be the leaders of the household and to be the ones that carry the vision of the household. So we must be able to articulate it, you know, Um it, it always kind of um, bothers me when you ask a man, you know, or uh, somebody that's a husband, you know, you know, what, what do you feel like God want to do with your family? And they don't they can't they can't really tell you, you know, uh, they're living their lives from, you know, uh, month to month, day to day with no real significance. And so um, vision brings significance. It brings significance. You have to be able to articulate it. So when, when Habakkuk said to make it plain, that means it has to be articulate. Number two, it has to be measurable. You need to be able to look in January um, 2017 and be able to measure where you are. Where you are. You know, um, sometimes if it doesn't, um, if you're, um, if if you and and some you know it brings a little bit you know because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you there were some things that I planned and you know and I didn't um didn't it didn't manifest why you know and I'll, I'll explain why but you know it, it brought a level of like frustration you know because you realize all the time that you waste you know you realize all the time that you did not you know spend um, investing in. Uh, the vision that God has placed on you. So it needs to be measurable. You know, your goals need to be measurable. It needs to be something that you can look back, you know, and be able to say, okay, I did this, 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 I didn't do that. And that'll bring a lot of encouragement to you. You know, the reason why people do spend their lives and doing whatever they want with their lives is because they don't have no real significance and they can't measure what they're uh, investing in now. So um, when your vision, when your um when your uh, when you when you when your vision is clear and it's measurable, you know you're able to run with it. And so the scripture says that you know so that write it upon the table, so that those that read it may run. If you want people to partner with you with your vision, you have to be able to articulate it. If you can't articulate it, you can't get the investors. You can't get the money that you need. You can't do what you need to do. You know, many times what we do is we wait for the money to arrive. For and then we say, God, I will. I'm, I'm, I want to do this, but this contingency is in place. And a lot of times, the contingency is money. And what we say is, okay, God, if I if you're going to, uh, I want to do this, but I can't do it without X amount of money, uh, X amount of dollars. And what you need to do is, you, if you have your vision art. Um, are, um, you're able to articulate your vision, you can find partners that will partner with you with your vision. You know, think about if you have a business goal. I think about one of my, one of my, um, one of the um, persons that I, that I look up to that is probably my friend in my head is Mark Zuckerberg. And the fact that he took one, um, you know, one spending his time in college going to parties and doing, you know, X, Y, Z, but he was able to articulate and what he wanted to do. And then in that articulation, he get, gathered people that was able to partner with him, you know, and I just wish I was there at the at the ground floor when he, you know, you know, you just start think about that. Like, you know, man, I wish I was one of the ones that was in that in that room having that conversation um, that that I could have been able to articulate um uh, vision, you know, and, uh, and articulate his vision. And so many of you are looking for people to partner with you, but you don't have, you can't speak for your vision. It's not clear. It's not understandable. It's not measurable. You know, anybody with a large amount of money is going to make sure that your vision is, it, it, it can be measured. You know, they want to know what they're investing in. And so, um, 
And so uh, what that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that your vision is um, clear, understandable, measurable. You know, Jesus said this was the joy that was set before uh, uh, before him that he was able to endure the cross. Jesus had a vision of the cross. So it produced endurance. The, the reason why many of you are fainting with your personal vision is because you are are are. Um, you 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 don't have joy, you know, that joy, you don't have that vision before you, you know, he was able to endure, you know, so vision produces endurance, you know, it produces endurance with what the enemy wants to attack you with, it produces endurance with, um, um, because I don't follow, oh, I'm trying to read the comments, y'all, so it doesn't, it doesn't, um, uh, it, it it produces a joy and it produces an endurance in you. And so you need endurance for vision because what the scripture says in Habakkuk, it says it will tarry. And so when it, when it's, it's, it's going to take some time, you know, uh, it's going to take some time, but you have to have endurance. You know, you know, sometimes what I do is if I, you know, vision, it keeps me encouraged. It keeps me focused. You know, it keeps me um um, understanding what I need to uh, put my time in, you know, and so uh, the vision also it demands your focus because there is an end goal. You know, your vision has an end goal, and so um, and, and not only does it has an end goal, but it has an appointed time. So there's an, a time variable. Um, you need to just tell yourself, my vision has an appointed time. And what I find, you know, in Christian, what we do is we compare ourselves with somebody else's appointed time, you know. And so what we need to do is we need to be secure with when our vision has its appointed time and not always find ourselves uh, comparing with others and comparing um uh, your vision with someone else, you know, and so once you have that uh, vision in your head, you must have an understanding that there is a time variable to it. You know, um, God's going to um, has a time for whether you uh, whether you um, want it or not, you know, whether you, you don't you don't understand the time variable, you know, that's what, you know, trips up a lot of people, you know, is that they try to they worry too much about the time variable. But what we have to find security in is that God know God has a, a has his times, uh, our times in his hand. Um, so we have to trust in his uh, ability to fulfill it because he says that he's going to fulfill it. The fulfillment comes from him. But what we need to do is, is we have to develop patience. You know, patience is one of the fruit of the spirits. And if you're going to produce vision, you must have patience. And so another key thing is you have to break your vision down based on by years, you know, and so um, you have an overall vision and then you have a yearly vision. And so um, your your um, yearly vision should push you towards your overall vision. And so if you want to. So, for example, if you want to be, you know, um, if you want to be a um, I don't know, I'm, and a uh, a plant a church planter or you know whatever so you want to be that if you want to be that what you have to do is you have to find out what God wants you to focus on in this year that pushes you closer to the end goal or pushes you closer to the appointed time I believe that the time variable is contingent on how well you work the vision you know and so um the scripture says that it will speak to not lie and speak and not lie. So um, your vision houses your legacy. So that means that once you're you're um, when, once you have left and and you, you're gone from the earth, your vision is continually speaking, you know, and this is this is what's going to allow you to think a little bit deeper, deeper in regards to your vision because it houses your legacy you know it holds your legacy it is what speaks when you're gone you know it speaks your values you know it speaks what you were what what was important to you you know it's almost having that physical person uh here in the earth even though they've left everything that they've their vision um 
Every part of their vision that that became fulfilled in the earth is still speaking, is still prophesying, is still declaring. And so it allows you to st- st- um, uh, think a little bit more deeper. What do you want your what, what is your legacy? What will speak for you? You know, uh, it speaks your nature. It speaks your purpose. It speaks your ideals. You know, uh, when vision meets destiny, it produces legacy. And so uh, vision is what God wants to do, you know, when it meets the destiny or the arrival point, then it produces your legacy. And so um, you have to think about that. You know, many times people have shallow, very, very shallow um, uh, vision and very shallow uh, uh, things that they that they feel like the Lord wants to do with them. And um, I want to encourage you that if you will stay the course and 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 stay focused, you know, and not allow yourself to be uh, distracted, your um your vision will continue to progress. You know, it will continue to move along the time variable and move along the time continuum until it reaches its appointed time. And so, um, there are five things that I'm going to talk about. Now, that just talks about vision, and so. Um, I, I know many of you are don't don't do a New Year's resolution. Get ask God to download your personal vision. You know, download your personal vision. I want to ask you for those of you that feel like, hey, you know, I don't know what my vision is. I prayed, I've sought the Lord. I don't know. You know, all I know is this. So my question to you is, my answer to to that is, um, what what have you done with what He's already given you? You know. Uh, what, what what have you done with what he's already given you? You know, we wait for the big picture sometimes. And, I, you know, over time, this is this is what I've learned. Is, and this is just my experience. You know, I'm speaking this off of experiences that vision evolves because what we does it, what we do um, as we evolve, certain parts of our vision become clear to us. And we become we ready ourselves to receive certain parts of our vision, you know, when we allow God to uh, uh, change us and and go from glory to glory and level to level and and faith to faith. So if you want to walk, if you want to walk, if you want to, um, uh, if you want the Lord to download your vision into you, then you have to work on changing. You have to work on changing into Him. Into, into his image and as you do that he finds that okay they're ready for this part okay they're ready for me to tell them this the reason why many of us don't have vision is because we haven't god can't trust us with giving it to us uh, uh he can't trust us with it now because we can't we're, we're still ha- we're still struggling with baby things that he told us to do you know we're still struggling with you know, uh, simple stuff like showing up on time. We still struggling with, you know, um, integrity. We're still struggling with uh, um, um, being a, a person of our word. You know, uh, I believe some Christians can sometimes be some of the most, you know, flimsy people when it comes to their word. You know, um, we can't. Uh, <laughs> dude, you just took me out when you wrote, wrote that. But yeah, you got to stop doing that. <laughs> but um you 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 dealing with some of the um you um dealing with some of the major struggles the ma- the the small struggles so if you want to um if you want to uh move closer to your vision what you have to do is um become like him ask god okay continue to change me continue to change me and as he changes you and he makes you into him he's able to impart You know, I mean, that's blessing me, man. You know, our objective should be to change and to be like him and continue to um, and to progress and to be like him. As we as we just continue and continue, he changes us, changes us, changes us, changes us. And he can trust us. So I'm going to ask you, what have you been doing with what he's already told you? Or are you still struggling with the baby stuff? You know, are you still, you know, struggling with um um, some of the the the, um, the cares of the world, or being entangled with the you know the stuff uh, of the world, are you still being entangled with stuff? You know, and so um, do and move with what he's already given you. 
you know, you we want this grandeur thing, but got to do what he's already told you. Speaking from experience in my own testimony, when I begin to make a deliberate attempt to change, stuff just start to download in me. You know, I remember a key particular time in my own story where I had got laid off of work and I asked, you know, you have to watch what you pray sometimes because I asked the Lord, I was frustrated with my job and I told the Lord, I said, God, I'm sick of this job. I don't have time for you and it's so stressful. And God said, okay. So I got laid off. But as a result, it was one of the biggest things. It wasn't the more major uh, cattle, um, catalyst times in my life because I recall praying and praying and praying in worship one day and um, I had kind of worship earlier that afternoon and I think I was sitting down, you know, maybe doing some, you know, study and I just began to ask God questions. You know, I asked the Lord, the, uh, the Lord says, why do you want a new job? And I'll say, cause I can pay my bills, get off unemployment. He said, no, why do you want a, a new job? Why do you want a, a better job? And over time, my um, my confession began to change. I was like, God, because I have vision. I have this. I want to do this. And I have to invest in this. And he said, okay. And so at that time, I'll never forget, I, I began to, you know, um, ask him all of these different questions. And I recall getting ready to go to sleep. And I could not sleep because my mind was just racing. I don't know if you ever uh, experienced uh, uh, those times where you have a lot on your mind, but in this case, it wasn't a lot on my mind. God was just talking, and He was like, "I want you to do this, and this is you're gonna make money from this, and you know uh, you're gonna do this." And and it was just like I couldn't sleep. I had to get up and write it down. I'm just writing, writing. I'm just scribbling and writing it down, and I could not sleep. And and I remember like that time that night. I was I went to bed at like two, three in the morning. And then because I couldn't sleep and I was trying to like go to sleep, but laying there in the bed, my mind was just racing because he was just putting all of this stuff on the inside of me. And so but it was only after I made a decision to change, only after I made a conscious decision to change and I changed and I knew exactly uh, what I uh, what my vision and what I wanted uh, it to uh, what I why I wanted a job. And so um so yeah, that that was that, that's a you know quick testimony, and I'm gonna run off run off five things that your vision needs. So if you got pen and paper, you want to write these down. But uh, not five. Did I write five? Yeah, I wrote five. Okay, five. Five things that your vision needs in order to grow and progress. Number one, it needs preparation. You know, so if you know what your vision is, and you have some insight on what God wants to do, you need to prepare. You know, so if you want to be a doctor, you need to know what you need to do now, you know, that will pr push you closer to that. You know, what I cannot stand and, and what, what really gets on my nerves is, is, is Christians that they expect God to just do this magic potion and they're going to walk up into things without any preparation, without any degrees, without any nothing. They just, you know, just they, they they rely so heavily on favor, which favor is good, but I want God to move upon my preparation, you know. I want him to move upon I wanna be ready, you know, you know, I wanna be uh prepared to walk into. So I wanna be working my vision as if the money is already here so that when the money shows up, I can just, you know, funnel it through because I guarantee you, if God gives some of you guys the money y'all need to do some of the things y'all want to do, y'all wouldn't spend it on that. Your heart, God knows your heart. And that's the crazy part about it. He knows you're not going to do it. He knows. And you can convince and you can complete and you can tell yourself all day long that you're going to, God, if you give me this million dollars, you give me this hundred thousand dollars, I'm going to do what you want me to do. But you ain't did the first part of what he wants you to do yet without the money. So work the vision like you already got the money. Your vision needs preparation if you want, if you want it to grow. Get prepared. Find out what you need to do. I, I When I talk to people that I men, mentor, I always deal with them with this. I say, okay, let's talk about what do you want to do? Okay, so what what what's hindering you from doing that? You know, you need to confront your devils. You know, you need to confront. This is a quick sidebar. You need to confront your devils because your devils is after your vision. You know, if you have uh, lust devils, if you have uh, uh, lying devils, if you have... 
you know, whatever devil, religious devils, whatever devils you have, you need to confront them because they're after your vision. And they show up at the, at, at the time when you're getting ready to walk into it. You know, so you want to make sure that, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it up, Kenneth. I'm going to leave it up because I know it's late. But God got some work. God has a word tonight. Um, your vision needs preparation. So work the middle. Work the middle, you guys. Work the middle. Uh, be consistent and be faithful. Work the middle. You know, if you're looking at them Facebook memories, you probably see how all the time you wasted and how you did not prepare and how you did not work. And so your, your devils is after your vision. So we must realize that. Um, your vision needs accountability. This is why you have to write it down. You need to articulate your vision to somebody so that they can hold you accountable for it. I'm going to tell you what I would do. Because I, okay, so this is a little little uh, 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 sidebar. So I'm from the South. I'm a country boy. That means I love to eat. So when I first started trying to lose weight, I didn't want no accountability. So what I would do is I wouldn't tell people I was losing weight. I just work out. So if I wanted to decide that I wanted to go get me some Popeye's chicken or if I wanted to have my wife cook me this big meal and I just wanted to indulge, I didn't have I, I didn't I didn't I didn't have to tell nobody that's going to look at me 30 months or four months later and see like, hey, how's that diet working out for you? So I wouldn't tell nobody. And that's the that's a problem. And so your vision needs accountability. Somebody else besides you need to know what you want to accomplish so they can hold you accountable for your time and they can keep you accountable. You say you want to do this. So your vision needs uh, so they can keep you accountable on how you spend your money as well. If you for most of us, we want, you know, our money to be differently this year. You know, we need to tell somebody I want to have this amount saved. Or I want to be I want to. Um, I want to um, be better at my finance. You need to tell somebody that's good at finances. So when you're getting ready to splurge and spend that money when them taxes come, they can tell you to put that in your pocket and, 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 and hold on to that money and, and save that money. And so your vision needs accountability if you want it to grow. If it has no accountability, it will fail. Number three, your vision needs a prophetic environment. You know, oh, you know it was coming. You know the prophetic was coming in there. The, your vision needs a prophetic environment. Your vision needs somebody, you know, you need to have an environment of people that's around you. That's all, you know, uh, working towards the same thing. That's all um, um, that, that has uh, God's heart, that has God, you know, God's mind, his will and his emotions. The prophetic environment, what a prophetic environment does, it brings hope. It keeps your it keeps your uh, heart from being, getting sick, you know, because what the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But if you have a, a prophetic environment and those times when you feeling like, God, this is taking too long. Somebody and, you know, if you in all nations, somebody can come grab your head and say that vision won't tarry. This is what's going to happen. And this is what's going to happen. It'll produce produce a level of endurance in you. It'll produce a level of, uh, of faith in you to continue on. And so number three, it needs a prophetic environment. If you're not, if you're not in a prophetic house or prophetic church, your vision is going to be choked because this is what happened with Joseph. His vision was choked because he had people out around him that was in, um, in conflict and and, and and disconnect to what God wanted to do in him. And so if you have a vision, it's going to be choked out if you're not in a prophetic environment. That's a hard truth. And I know, but I had to hit you with it because, you know, a lot of us want to work vision, but we end up, um, we end up becoming, um, uh, we lose heart or we come, we, we become faint at heart. You know, because we can't, you know, the vision is going to tarry. It's going to take some time, you know, and so you, it's, it's going to be difficult, you know, for you to, um, it's going to be difficult for you to hang on if you don't have a prophetic environment. You need somebody that's constantly speaking the word of the Lord, an environment that hosts people that want to have vision and that want to see you win. You need somebody that that's going to want to see you win when you don't want to see you win. You need somebody that's going to say, you know, when you want to, you know, turn and fall into sin. They're going to say, but this vision, you have this vision, you have this, you know, and so you want to be able to um, be in that type of environment that's going to help you with that. 
Number four, your vision needs purpose. You know, you need to have the why on why you're doing it. Because if you don't have the why, you'll end up uh, you'll end up um, uh, frustrated. You, it, your 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 vision won't have no aim. You know, you won't have no point to it. It won't have no uh, direction, you know, so uh, it needs purpose. Why do you want to accomplish these things, you know, so that you can aim and focus what you want to do? And so finally, your vision needs prayer. You know, you have to pray it. You have to cover it. You have to speak over it. You need to declare it. Your vision needs to have consistent prayer, you know. So let me ask you this question. How often do you pray for your vision? You know, how often do you fast for your vision? How often do you spend time, you know, uh, um, allowing God to deal with things that um, oppose your vision? And so prayer is, is, is the main thing. You know, when you spend time in prayer, uh, uh, consistent prayer, you will find that your vision will um, will have fuel. You know, it'll keep you encouraged. It'll it'll push you uh, as you begin to pray and articulate it. Uh, uh, to God. God already knows what, what it is. Um, but his word says, put me in remembrance of my word. And so not that God needs to be reminded, but you need to put God in remembrance of the vision that he spoke over your life. I mean, when you do that, just think about if you do that, it'll just eliminate discouragement. It'll eliminate confusion because if I'm discouraged and I say, and I tell the Lord, God, you have this, you, you said you was going to do this. He's responsible to make sure that it comes to pass. You know, so and 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 I, and one thing cuz I feel like somebody needs this, don't despise small beginnings, you know. Don't despise small beginnings. That's a prophetic word to somebody. I heard that. Don't despise small beginnings. Don't be frustrated and compare your beginning to someone's someone else's middle. Don't despise your small beginnings. If you are if you are in phase one, be secure and work your phase one. You know, work your phase one. Don't be discouraged and and and, and don't be uh, frustrated. You know, be, don't despise small beginnings. God is faithful and just to complete His word. You know, as He as as His um word does not return. Uh, uh, as the snow does not return to the to the heavens, so shall his word it will it will accomplish. You know it will it will accomplish that which which uh, he has set it uh, forth to uh, do. So yeah, that's vision, you guys. I was burdened with that today because I was looking at my Facebook feed and everybody was talking about their new year, new me, and I'm like, half of these people are gonna be in the same spot they are next year. It's a tough cookie. Tough pill to swallow, but I want you guys to be able to work your vision. Yes, I will be doing scopes more often. That's a rebuke for for from Kenneth to me. Do scopes more often. So I really just I really just combined my Thursday scope because I I just got stirred. But this scope was supposed to be part, two parts to it, but I got stirred in the in the middle, which always happens. But um, I'll be scoping more, of course. Um, a lot, a lot of, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff that I am running with and planning to release to you guys. So, uh, so yeah, work that vision, work that vision, work that vision. Yes, I am, um, but I'm video blogging. I'm not writing anymore. I'm video blogging. So, um, but yeah. Um, so um, I will answer probably about two to three questions because the time has come for the prophet to rest his eyes. And work your phases. Work your phases, people. Don't be discouraged. Don't let these people discourage you. God is faithful and just to perform his word. That is the word of the Lord. That's the word of the Lord. You know, so I know you looked at them Facebook memories and you got discouraged. I did too. I ain't gonna lie. I got discouraged. I said, Jesus, what was I doing? How much of my vision is prophetic and how much is my own ingenuity? That's a good question. Um, the prophetic part uh, is the part that um, it speaks to your purpose. You know, uh, 
the 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 actual ingenuity of it or the the um is the how to you know it's the part that god begins to release you know and give you the uh skill or the wisdom to carry it out and so um the majority of your vision is going to be prophetic you know because it comes from god you know, and so it's going to be his voice or uh, what he wants to do with your life, you know, and what he and, and another key significant thing, too, as well, Kenneth, is that, you know, you it also uh, speaks to your uh, the area that you live in, you know. And so um, even in your own area, you know, you want to think about some of the things that, you know, God may want to accomplish in your region. You know, a lot of times, you know, churches do this, but. You know, what in your city, you know, what God wants to do in your life, uh, 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 for, uh, uh, through your life in your city, you know. And so it gives it gives you a wide variety, you know, of different points to speak from. You know, you have a, you know, marriage vision, you know, family vision, vision for your money. You know, you need a vision for your um, your uh your uh, soul, you know, you need to say, okay, you know, I am going to not deal with fear, you know, by, you know, I, I want you to not, I want to remove this element of fear out of me by the end of the year, God, you know, and so, um, and so I hope that answers your question, you know, there's different compartments. And so when you ask the purpose, that that download that that will uh download the prophetic aspect of it. The ingenuity or the uh the creative part of it is the wisdom, you know. Um one of the things, one of my prayers that I pray uh this year is that I pray um I pray Solomon's prayer. I say, God, this family, this family that you gave gave me is a great family. I don't know what I'm doing. And I need you to download the wisdom and the know-how to accomplish the um, to accomplish uh, what you want me to do in this family. You know what you want me to do for my kids and how you want me to spend my life with my kids and so uh, with my wife as well. So uh, once you kind of you know realize that. Your and it's not just your it's it's not your own ingenuity or your own mind. It's actually God's wisdom that gives you the know how. So that's pretty much. Yes, it does. But I need more on it, though. Maybe in another scope. OK, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, we could talk about it. That's a good question, though. So I am going to, you know, rest my eyes. Because it's the, the time, the hours is well spent. But I want to encourage you guys. I want y'all to get busy. If you see me or or if you, you know, uh, are friends with me on Facebook, share. Let me know. I, you know, I want to know how you guys are coming up with this. If You know, how are you pro pro progressing your vision? You know, um, if you know what what questions do you have? I may do a scope on just like the fundamentals of it because, you know, a lot of times people get get confused with the how to how to to do it but i want to encourage you guys share this scope let people know you know if you see somebody posting up a uh new year new me or some kind of resolution just put the link to this scope and let it bless them all right love you guys bye